how much is an IP worth? That is the question you have to ask yourself. How much of a premium are you willing to pay on an IP that you may or may not love because you're doing it either way? Hey, it's Chris, let's go. Unmatched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What do you need to know? Is it right for you? Should you back it on crowdfunding or should you wait for retail? Let's go, let's help you figure out, no FOMO zone. So Unmatched is one of the greatest of the restoration games that has come out. They have absolutely done what I will eat crow on of restoring what Star Wars Epic Duels was, creating a very simple system that is both fun and giving strategy from a tactical, well, procedural side of things. And I give them a lot of kudos. Now, crowdfunding though, crowdfunding, remember, free loan, free business loan, which small indie publisher am I willing to give my free loan with? And with Unmatched, the big conundrum right now is you are paying for a little bit of a premium here. You are paying for a slight deluxification, which again, not terribly different from Tales to Amaze, which we'll talk about again in a second comparison wise. You're also, I fear, paying for a little bit of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles IP here. And that is probably the biggest point that I will put out here at the beginning is, are you willing to pay nostalgia factor or not for an IP that you may or may not have strong feelings for? That is the main question. You're getting an IP tax. And I don't say that as a pro. I don't say that as a con. I say that as a matter of fact. And that's okay, right? The Marvel games also are running into that. I would wager that that is a ubiquitous thing across the board that everybody runs into. So that is just par for the course at this point, I guess is what I'm saying. But if that's not what you're interested in, there's plenty of their generic non-IP, not you know anything properties that you can go pick up instead. So the main incentive you have to ask yourself then, if I don't care about the IP, is this a good entry point to Unmatched? Do I want to get in at this point? Because Unmatched now offers us competitive as well as cooperative with the adventures style, with the previous first Tales to a Maze. That was significant, offering you a new dynamic mode in that degree. But is this the best jumping in point? And I feel bad about saying this, but I would argue that no. No, I, I would argue this is a horrible jumping in point. Unless you have extreme fever for the nostalgia factor of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I would argue that this is a, a very bad way to get in right now. Unless this is the only way you're going to get it to the table. And if it is, okay, you know what? But then I'll also say maybe you should just wait for retail too. Because if you're getting in at this point, this is an expensive price point to jump in at. Because you're essentially looking at at least $90 to test the waters of this game. When you can pick up any of the retail sets right now. Because if you're testing it out, that means you're not sure about the actual physical mechanics on the table in front of me. You can pick up a set for 15 or $20 at most with a couple characters, three-ish at least, on the secondary market from somebody else that's wanting to get rid of it because they don't like it for the same reasons that you're looking to get into it, they got out of it, right? They speculated and they were wrong. And you don't want to be that person, well, for $15, I hate doing that, right? Because if it's cheap, it doesn't mean it's going to stay. It just means it's cluttering things up. But is it better then to say, well, Chris, I'm going to go for it for $90 because I'm including shipping in the $80 price point pledge is the lowest pledge you can get, correct? So that is not what you need to be doing. Well, then you go, Chris, okay, I want to get on the cooperative side of things, Chris. I want to get on the cooperative side of things. Well, you can buy a brand new copy right now of Tales to Amaze without some of the miniature deluxifications for like, I don't know, like $42, $45. Half the price, and you can have it probably in two to three days, depending on where you order it from, a week at most. At the time of me filming this, if you ordered this, you could have it before this campaign even ended. And then you could find out, and then you could late back it or late pledge it as well from that regard. And if you have not played this and you're, you're doing this, you should be going out and buying one of the other ones for half the cost, right? Half the cost, all of the gameplay. Because the other thing that is 
within this box that we have to talk about is this is not dramatically different, you know, completely out there different gameplay. This is a twist, a spin, a slight asymmetry of the other unmatched. Now, and that's the tricky point, right? You know, you could say to me as a counterpoint, Chris, I'm going to buy one of the other ones. I'm going to buy Legends 1 or Legends 2, which is a great entry point. Legends 1's especially, you know, always shows up in the secondary market. But I'm going to buy that. I'm going to buy Tales to Amaze. And those are just going to be characters that I hate because you know what? My first one that I got was Hell's Kitchen. And I don't like any of the characters in Hell's Kitchen. It almost turned me off. And it almost prevented me from getting this in the first place. But I did it because I know what Star Wars Epic Duels was for me because I owned it and then I sold it because, you know, I'm stupid like that. But this is with Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael. None of their mechanics are that dramatically different. They offer slight nuances. You know, Michelangelo only has a hand of three cards in this case and never gets above three and always has to discard down to three on a turn by turn basis. Whenever he plays one, he also gets to draw one. So the dynamic there is slightly different. Uh, Leonardo can move other people around the board for free. Donatello has cards that not only don't get discarded, they get slotted under him to give him a constant upgrade bonus. And Raphael is just mad. But those are the dynamic differences that you're getting with this game. And so none of those things, right, like are, wow, Chris, that is just the most unique thing I've ever heard. And chances are it's not going to blow you away with a vast difference that it is or, well, is not. So then we have to go back to the beginning, right? We have to talk about the price point. Because, you know, the pledge level comparatively to Tales to a Maze right now is $80 versus $60. Because some of you probably are doubting or some of you are saying he's an idiot. Uh, you're not paying more for, you know, IP. You're, you're clearly not doing that. Chris, I don't know where you're getting that from. You're just making it up. Okay, well, that's fine. Right, right. Okay, I'm wrong. Let's say I'm wrong. But it is... You can't deny me, it is $20 more than this was previously, right? And I believe actually they did say that in the comment section on BoardGameGeek, so that's not just me saying it, but let's just put that aside for the sake of the argument and let's just say it's $20 straight up more, right? Okay, so you say, okay, Chris, well, I'm getting more, aren't I? Well, you're getting your two villains, right? You're getting Shredder and Krang. You're getting your four Ninja Turtles and you're getting all of their little minion allies that go along with that. You're also getting your six different minions for the bad guys. You're getting Bebop and Rocksteady, Rat King, Leatherhead, Baxter Stockman, Slash, and Wingnut with Screwloose. Okay, Chris, I'm, I'm getting a lot more right there. Well, are you? And so on the, on the other side of things, right? Tales to a Maze. You had Mothman and you had the Alien Invader. Well, then you also had Jill Trent, Annie Christmas, Nikola Tesla, and Golden Bat. So again, total six. You had six henchmen minions that went along with the bad guys as well. Each of these decks is 30 cards. Now, the only difference there is, you know, the bad guy decks in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have 20 cards each. The bad guys from the previous edition have 19 cards each. Uh, miniatures still there on both accounts. You can get extra, extra miniatures at the $225 pledge level or as one of the add-ons, the extra toppings that just give you, well, radical art sculpts. So that's not terribly different. But the other weird thing, right, is despite the increased price point, Tales to Amaze actually gave us the eight Dune Moths and the eight little green Martians, both in literal miniature forms instead of the tokens that just went straight along with it for backers. And you also got <laughs> foil promos. So the problem that I see when I pull up the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle page already is that, okay, I've got regular tokens for the foot soldiers. I've got regular minion tokens. I've got regular, you know, tokens for the city threats. And that's, that's it, right? Like I don't see any upgrade there. So in a sense, I'm actually getting downgraded with some of those. And that's okay. But the only other difference then is I'm getting the foil promos. Okay, those are equal. So then the what is the difference? Well, the alt art promo pack, which I have to wonder, again, from that standpoint, right, is I'm not getting the upgraded little minion miniatures to go along with it. And I'm now just getting alt art instead of it. So are, were we paying for alt art? Was alt art commissioned in order to get it along with because this is an impressive list of people doing the alt art and there is some very nice stuff but there's also as i've heard people say some alt art that you just kind of go mm, i don't really have any interest in that right like and that's okay but that i feel like is part of the price point and i can't separate that out and i'm getting probably overall comparatively less deluxification than the previous one for a 20 dollar increase because again, I've got both pages on my laptop pulled up in front of me right now, and you have almost simultaneous numbers of 
tokens of villain action cards, minion action cards, minion tokens, health dials on both pages altogether. And again, I, I just go, yeah, you're paying a price creep. And is that inflation? Is that alt art promo? I don't know, but that's a big increase. Now, you're going to say on the back end of things, this is the other argument. Chris, it's flat rate shipping, though. That's the big difference, right, Chris? It is flat rate shipping. I don't have to worry about what the shipping is going to be, Chris. And well, <laughs> truth be told, again, going back to Tales to Amaze, right? free shipping in the United States or Canada for that one, and then flat shipping to those otherwise in North America elsewhere. And they said local partners will pick it up later again, because that was part of it as well. But uh, shipping with this one, again, is $10 for the United States. So not even it was $60 plus shipping last time for me, right? Just for me, I'm just talking about me, just talking about me. It was $60 total. This is $90, and I've already said the comparison-wise of components are exactly the same. So what are you paying for, I guess? If you don't think that it's IP cost, if you don't think it's alt art, what are you paying for? Because that is a good 50% increase with shipping included, adjusting for inflation for what, two years? Two years time? That is more than the cost of inflation. So again, I'm not saying that they're doing anything wrong. Let me be very clear about that. But I am saying that this cost creep of deluxification, as well as cost creep in general on crowdfunding is a thing. And this campaign, as much as I love this, as much as I am going to tell you right now, this game will end up in my collection. It would cost literally almost double the previous version from that aspect retail wise compared to getting on crowdfunding right now and part of that is the promo pack that i am not a huge fan of from a non-gameplay standpoint i am a gameplay person and you're wondering you know hypocrite in chief right there is the kickstarter version i traded for it so again i i want this game i love the idea of this game but with the uh, rules that are on the page that talk about the slight differences between Shredder and Krang and how Shredder is going to be placing the footmen down between the burrows. And if you walk over them, that's how you get rid of them. And he just auto populates sort of a pandemic style, right? And what if one of the burrows gets overflowed, then it gets flipped over. And then if you go over them, they'll, you can't actually get rid of them. You just take damage. So it's pandemic on steroids, if you will. And then Krang has, you know, the little activation machines as he's pulling open the portal to bring his world over. And if you're next to it, you just turn it off. And then he turns it back on. And then he, you turn it off. And then he turns it back on. And then he, he turns it off. And, and those are the dynamics. So again, I think that this is offering something good. But I'm not sure that I want to give a $100 loan right now. You know, let's go back to that flat rate shipping because, again, I didn't say anything else about that, right? It's flat rate shipping. And you're going, well, Chris, they can't offer free shipping for everybody because of... Yeah, yeah right? So this flat rate shipping is really good if you're spending $300 and getting a box three times the size. But if I'm getting a box a third the size and I'm paying or I'm offsetting the cost of somebody else's shipping at that higher level... I don't really want to do that, folks. I don't really want to offset someone else's shipping, right? If you're one of those higher people, yeah, you're getting a better deal. And I, you know, I, I will give them kudos because I really love the idea of already including, and I wish that this would have had it, the Shredder and Krang Hero Decks for 20 bucks. And if that was the difference, or if you said, you know what, you know, we're going to give you a $70, $80 pledge level, but you get to pick your ad on the Playmat or the Hero Decks, I would be probably backing this right now. But having those hero decks also be separate, that's where I go, you know what, I maybe we'll just pick this all up at the other side of things. Because again, that would at least be, you know, I'm getting more gameplay content for more money, right? Commensurate increase on both sides. But I don't see that as much as I want to value wise. And again, value horribly, horribly subjective. It's a horrible reason to back things. From a value standpoint, I'm going to resell it. This is not the point of this video. It never is. But this is, you get it because you're getting what you want and it's a better situation for you. And for me, based on all of these discussions and all of these individual aspects, again, I'm going to say, wait and see, you know, and worst case scenario, 
Worst case scenario right now, I pay a slight premium from a slight scalper on the secondary market, or I buy it or trade for it straight value because somebody else, you know, said, I don't really like this because this is the jumping in point for me. And I decided that this wasn't uh, the game I liked in the first place. And there inevitably will be tons of those people regardless, because there are nearly 8,000 people at the time of me filming this backing it. And that means you're inevitably going to have people that aren't going to like it too with those high of numbers. So there you go. Those are my thoughts. Unmatched Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm going to own it, but how is it going to end up here? Well, we'll see. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. Good friends of the channel. Have a great day. And I put that on a t-shirt. Good friends of the channel. Legism. Peace out. Subscribe. Thumb it. Thumb it. You know you want to.